what the play in the front end can be, especially with the a weak axle pin, a worn axle pin. You'll see this axle move back and forth. This, would affect, this affects your travel, uh, your turning radius, and your steering. Uh, there's a ton of play in this machine. If you can see how much that's moving, it shouldn't move at all. There's some play in the ball joints in this machine, but that axle is moving a ton. So there's the wheel turned. If I force it and take that play out of there, I get some more turning radius out of that. Does it the same thing both directions, but it greatly affects your turning radius. It wears the hell out of your components. But look at the machine rocking back and forth on there. So another thing to look at, if you go and replace your tie rods and put the new axle pin in and you're still not getting your good turning, often this axle can be twisted or bent and that'll affect your turning radius and your steering greatly. These airs will get bent or twisted. This rod or the drag link will get, get bent. All that contributes to turning problems. Even the vertical on the spindle can be bent. Uh, the horizontal on the spindle, the axle can be bent. Often these uh, these front axles get twisted when they hit a pothole. And then uh, you'll, you'll actually be able to look at this should be straight when you're looking from the side, both sides. There should be no twist or bend or bow in that. So all that, all that stuff to look at, your tie rod and drag links should be straight. But the axle pin's a huge factor in your steering. So if you're going to fix your steering right, you want to replace your rod ends, tie rod ends. And then go with our heavy duty axle pin, which we'll sh we've shown you, and our heavy duty tie rod ends. And that'll get you in the ballpark. But if you got bent components, you're never going to get it right, so you have to fix your bent components. Again, that's way too much slop for those tires not to move while everything else is moving with the steering wheel. This is a, a tractor we purchased with an older axle pin upgrade. But if you notice, the axle is moving very little. There's some play in this ball joint for sure. But I'm turning the wheel just as much as it was in the last tractor. And that axle is barely moving. That pin could probably get tightened up, the axle pin, and it'll take that slop out of there. But there's a ton of play in the ball joints and the steering gear, so that should be addressed. You'll notice there's no play in that axle with that new axle pin. That axle is not moving at all. I'm moving the steering wheel. There's some play in the ball joints here. Not horrible, but I'm moving it just as much as I was in that last 4016 you saw. And there's no axle movement at all. The tires are turning the full radius. And even with all that force applied on there, that pin's not moving. It's a big deal on your steering, your playing, your steering, and also your turning radius. The full upgrade kit we sell includes the Heim joints that are upgraded, we'll show you. The poor man's power steering kit that's sitting underneath here. You'll get wheel bearings, new wheel bearings, and a new axle pin. That takes care of most, most commonly worn items. If you're still having issues, like I said, you're going to have a, something's going to be twisted or bent or, or installed or adjusted incorrectly. And your steering gear underneath is another item that wears and breaks. But nine times out of ten, if you replace it, all these tie rod, drag link ends, axle pin, that corrects, corrects your problem. And then the new wheel bearings are nice to have, and your poor man's power steering makes this thing steer like a dream. So this is your steering gear up here. As you can see, this one's had hoses rerouted in the wrong way, and the gears rubbing on the hose. This is a customer's tractor. We'll take care of all this. Um, but this is your steering column gear. Comes off your steering wheel. There's a shaft. Here's the gear we want to take off. Connected to the drag link that goes to the front end. Most times he's been monkeyed around with people who put washers and shims and. All kinds of different things in there to try to try to space them. The engagement here is what people are worried about. And these teeth usually wear or break off. And there's a set number of shims that are a specific thickness. And you have to keep the same amount of shims that were in there from the factory in the same thickness. And you either take them from the bottom move them up to push the gear down. Or take them from the top and move them down to push the gear up. And as the gear goes up your engagement is better on your, t your teeth here. So there's quite a bit of slop in there, play, 
this is not supposed to be moving up and down very much and it's not supposed to have much movement without the teeth engaging so we're going to take this off we're going to replace this on this tractor here most times it's a 9 16th or half inch uh, bolt sometimes it's a through bolt with a nut on top so you may have to hold it from the top of the wrench or you can do it with a wrench up here if you got the right wrench and off the bolt comes so there's usually a thick washer even thicker than this one but depending on the year did it change it and spacers and shims in here and as you can see there's multiple shims they're very thin there's probably two stuck together here too but we'll worry about that after so just keep an eye out for that and there's going to be some on top too or there should be at least sometimes this drops right down other times not so much this one's going to fight a little bit because of the, the hose where it's worn in also. And sometimes you may need to just move the steering gear, the steering wheel up top. Or if you got it jacked off the ground, you can do it by hand here. Alright, off that goes. And there are no shims up top here. And there should be none on the gear. And none hung up here. Most of the time these gears are actually not too bad. It's the moon gear we're talking about. This one does have some definite wear in it. But the customer doesn't want to spend a ton of money. And uh, this would include pulling the whole, whole steering column out, grinding this gear off and welding a new one in. Usually people try to take the steering wheel off, but that ends up uh, being a disaster because they don't come off very easy most of the time. And the steering wheels get wrecked. So a lot of guys find it easier. You grind a the spot weld off the bottom of this gear, and slide it off, put a new one on. That's not too bad of a project, but I think we can get by with a, a new moon gear on this one. Yeah. Now we're going to show you how to install the steering gear. And there's a couple different styles over the years they've had, but we're going to do a full alignment. So what you start by the top where the steering wheel is and get your steering wheel in your straight position which would mean where your wheels would be straight doesn't matter if they're straight but where they would be straight where you're comfortable with the wheel so the wheels are all a little different depending on year but some have three bars in them in like a triangle so you can either have the single bar facing direct at 12 o'clock or you can spin it 180 degrees and have your two bars at 10 and 2 whatever you're comfortable with the newer ones have more horizontal sets of four bars but basically get that wheel where if you're sitting in the tractor and the wheel's in your hand, you feel like your steering axle and front tires should be straight. Whether they're not or, or, or are straight, it doesn't matter at this point. What you're going to want to do is make sure your steering wheel up top is in the straight position. So you line the arrow up with this, the, the gear that's face, the tooth that's facing straight back, as long as your steering wheel is straight. Again, we're talking about these shims before. Depending on the year, you're going to have different amount of shims, maybe thicknesses. You have to have the original amount of shims and the original thickness in order for this to work. And what the shims do is raise and lower this gear here so that your teeth engage differently. As this is at an angle and the moon gear is cut a little over at an angle, the farther down it is, the less engagement you have. The farther up, the more engagement. So as it wears, you take shims from the top of the gear and place them on the bottom. But you never remove shims totally. You just want to take take them and move them from top to bottom sometimes it's one two three all of them depending how much play you have and the point of the shims is so everything is even here and flush you, you can't have this not be flush because otherwise it'll either tighten up on the shaft and then this this gear will rock and wear and wobble or it'll tighten up if you have have them off it'll tighten up on these and not on the on the shaft and you won't get get it very tight and it'll do the same thing it'll wear and wobble and break so it's important that you, when you run your fingernail over here, like you can see here, it's flush. That means you got the right thickness, the right amount of shims. And it doesn't matter if you've got them on top or bottom. It's all going to be the same. It's just going to change the engagement of your teeth. So we can stick a couple up here. and see your distance your gap and you put those back on and then you're flush so that's how this, this style would work so check your parts book for your year and the right amount of shims and the thickness and if in doubt order new ones 
so that's that's one style this will be a different year gear just to show you how things are different it's the same deal with the arrow you line it up like you would but this one's got the four shims that worked on that one with this thickness but you see they're they're not never going to work on here if you were to tighten that up this gear would break and wobble and wear so that's why it's important to know how many shims you have on your machine and the thickness all right so up here you want very clean and a dab of grease when you go to do your new install because this is where the the steering gear and shims ride make sure your shaft's clean i'll just put a little grease on the shaft up here where the shims are going to wear or the steering gear depending on your style and how many shims you got so this is the new steering gear from ingersoll it doesn't have an arrow so as you can see we counted the teeth marked where this gear needs to engage and if you've got an odd number of teeth you want most of the time more teeth on this side the side where the drag link connects that's how they're set up for whatever reason um, you may have to readjust this if you're turning one way sh more than the other at the end of the alignment but usually this works so count your teeth all right make sure your your wheel is straight still and the center tooth is the one you're engaging on and see this updated style doesn't have room for many shims when you get this all the way up in there so your washer and everything is going to go like it should there's that bronze bushing that wears in some of these that is replaceable and if that wears you still get a lot of wobble and articulation on here and that's how these things wear out and break so we upgrade the hardware when you do these usually use a bigger thicker wider washer it helps with the shims this one doesn't have the shims as it's a new style and then we use a grade 8 bolt flat washer and lock washer now don't go too crazy tight them but you definitely want it good and snug You may have to remove this one and readjust it for one tooth one direction or the other once we get to the aligning part of this process but as you can see now this engages up higher where it's less worn I don't know if you can see that in the camera but that's that's where this goes here and like I said if you have the shim ones you can move it up or down how it goes on the teeth and the drag link is not connected at this point it's just putting the steering gear on it there's your engagement for you're moving the wheel up top I'm moving this with the drag link not being connected to the front axle as you can see someone routed this hose in the wrong spot it's worn we're gonna have to adjust this and address it but that's how the steering gear goes on and the start of your alignment obviously so when you start the alignment make sure your steering wheel is straight this tooth is engaged where it should be so the next step in the alignment, since we just put the steering gear on and got the teeth engaged like they should be, your steering wheel is facing straight up and down on this one. You can spin it around and do it the other way, but you want your wheel to be where your front axle and tires would, would be straight. Don't worry about where they are now. Make sure the steering wheel is straight. Again, customer's tractor, don't, don't mind the steering wheel. So the steering wheel is straight. The arrow on the gear down below is aligned with the tooth on the shaft here. So the next thing to do is you've got the drag link already connected to the steering gear and you got the ends threaded in roughly the same on both both sides now you're going to back your jam nuts out all the way on both sides if you can probably see this one or not but okay and what that allows you to do is when you're turning this rod these two are going to stay fixed and it's going to push and pull equally on both sides if you have trouble getting them the right distance you can put them both all the way in and then mount that and mount this somewhere or hold on to it and then start with these all the way in and work your way out so right now all we're going to do is just hook it up with our new heavy duty ends in it okay and then now we're just going to loop the threads a little bit. Lock washer. Jam nut. Get it started. And then you're going to tighten it up. Impact makes this job a lot easier, but you can use hand tools. 5 8 wrench on the top of the shank. 
You don't have to go crazy, but just snug them up nice. Okay. So that part's set. And still, you're not worrying about the front two wheels in relation to each other. You're just worrying about things being straight as far as the axle goes. You want to make sure your wheel didn't move. It's still straight up. And then and you're just going to want to eyeball your axle and make sure the tires are straight. doesn't matter if one's out a little bit to the other one. You're just going to want to make sure you get it kind of straight. Your toe in or toe out doesn't matter. So that actually looks pretty straight right there. So if your tractor is out of alignment from right to left, you're going to want to spin this rod. So if you, if you make it longer, which would be pushing it out, you're going to turn the alignment to the right and the opposite would be going to the left. So if you're sucking it in. Right now this tractor is pretty straight, but just to give you an idea, and since both rod ends are bolted in, they're going to come and go at the same distance because one's left hand thread and one's right. You want to hold your steering wheel in that straight on position, otherwise it's going to move here on that end. So they, they move to the left a little bit, I don't know if you can see that or not, but they have. You want to move back to the right, make sure your steering wheel again is in the correct position. You can use pipe wrench, these kind of pipe wrenches, channel locks, whatever you need to grip that rod. It should move pretty easy, especially if you looped up the threads when you put the new rod ends on. And that's how you move it right to left. So make sure your wheel is always straight again. And this one still has to come to the left some more. You can use whatever tool you need. Just remember to hold the steering wheel straight on where it was. Double check your wheel, go around the front, look if it looks like they're straight, appears to be pretty good. Okay, so check your tires to make sure they're straight, doesn't matter if they're towed in or towed out, just make sure they're facing straight. Now we're going to adjust the toe. So your toe is your, your tires, if they're facing in, towed in, or if they're facing out a little bit, towed out. So usually you want them facing in, towed in a little bit. It keeps the tractor or vehicle straight. Again, you're going to want to take your jam nuts and move them all the way out. You want to make sure you start with roughly the same amount of threads sticking out. What we do is match this up to the old one. When we put the new ends in, we match it up to the ends we took out. But if you need to start all the way over, you can thread them all the way in. And then hold these two and, and thread this in or out, and they'll both go even as long as these are fixed. But these are close enough. I'm going to a couple of threads off, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want to be a bunch of threads off. Take your jam nuts, put them where they need to be, all the way out to start. And then you're going to move this bar, and these are towed out slightly, I can tell by looking at them. If you need to, need to get a little more particular, you can measure from the front between the two tires and from the back and that'll tell you if there's a shorter distance or a longer distance if it's towed in or out so if the front is longer they're towed out if the front is in they're shorter they're towed in you just need a little bit of tow it's a garden tractor not a race car and to bring the tow in you're gonna gonna want to have these ends come in that's gonna bring the tires in so as you can see one's right hand thread one's left they're both sucking in you're going to want to make sure this rod's straight too. This one's pretty straight. Not new, not perfect, but it functions. As you can see, the tires are coming in. So there, I'd say they're pretty close to being straight. Head on, they're probably even front to back. But we want a slight toe in. A few threads do go a long way. And again, when you're doing this, you're going to make sure these are fastened down below. Otherwise, you're going to get slop. And then you want to stand back and take a good look. They're pretty good, I think. This has got the internal threaded ends. A lot of them have the external threaded, so the rod itself is threaded, and the ends are female. Alright, so once you get this where you want it to be, again, double check, make sure your steering wheel didn't move. It didn't. 
and then now I would go take it for a ride at this point but for video's sake you're just going to tighten up your jam nuts again don't go nuts you don't want to stress these joints out they just got to jam up on there so they don't back out one's left hand thread remember one's right so to loosen one you're going to be turning them the direction to tighten it and then to tighten it will be loosened so there you go on this one I'm going to do the same with your drag link both the jam nuts on there take it for a ride see how you like it then go through and grease up all your new ends grease up your steering gear we're going to put a new front heavy duty axle pin in this but you're going to grease that once it's installed and any other grease points that are on your tractor for the mower lift rocker shaft and that's pretty much how you line it pretty simple that's how we do it at least there's a lot of different ways to do it but that's how, how we do it and always start with your steering gear remember lined up with the right amount of shims and the steering arrow lined up with the steering column shaft straight ahead okay. all right so another another part of the alignment deal is to make sure you turn evenly to the left and right when you hit your stops so this tractor has got welded on stops the later models have an adjustable threaded bolt or rod so if you're adjusting you're doing your alignment and you're turning make sure before you do your adjustments that the nut and bolt is all the way back you can adjust your stops in later you don't want the stops affecting your alignment so that's your turn to the left that's a turn to the right and again your stop is, is hitting uh, these tractors tend to turn a little better to the right but not noticeably a huge difference if they're set up right so what major cause tends to be is they're off one tooth on the steering gear that we we're talking about so if that's the case you got to take the drop the gear and move it over a tooth depending on which direction they're they're turning more to a lot of people will sit there and play with the drag link and, and get your extra distance for your one side of your turn that way but you're shorting yourself on the other side again and it affects your turning radius all the way so you don't really want to use that to adjust your left or right difference you want to make sure your your tooth on the, the moon gear is lined up correctly with the steering wheel being positioned up and down straight that's where you fix that then your final adjustments done on the drag link so there's your right turn there's your left so this one could be adjusted probably if it's more than a, a little bit difference between right and left you're going to be off a tooth all right so we came down here to readjust the steering gears as it was turning a little bit more to one side than the other and as you can see we're right right on the gear between the mark we had so right now it's got an even amount of teeth on both sides with this new gear that works fine that's what you want some of the older gears you're going to have an uneven amount and usually that uneven amount is on the side if you can see where the drag link hooks up so there'd be more teeth on this side than this side of the arrow but there's no arrow on here so we had to make our own mark and uh we initially set it off up off a tooth so if you're turning one way or the other this is the way to correct it you move it one tooth one direction or the other but a lot of people complain about them turning better to the right than the left and they do a little bit but it shouldn't be very noticeable if, if it is somebody's monkeyed around with this gear and doesn't have it installed right so we weren't happy with the way it was turning it was turning one direction more to the right than the, than the left which is is common but a little bit more than it should so we went underneath and moved the moon gear on the steering column gear over a tooth and that corrected the problem but now we have to readjust our drag link because the alignment's off so to adjust that we just have to make sure our jam nuts again are loose on the drag link and adjust the drag link now the other biggest problem with the steering and alignment and we usually do it first but we're out of pins right now is this front axle pin it allows this axle which this one's got quite a bit of play but there's usually ones that are far worse see that back and forth action that affects your alignment and your turning radius so with our new pin it's a solid pin that clamps you put it in here you tighten it down it brings the frame and axle together tighter and you have zero play in here once our new pins in there so usually when we're aligning the tractor that's done first 
so the alignment can be also correct. Video purposes, we're just doing this to show you. But so this will affect your turning radius too, because you see how this axle is pushing back when you turn one direction. And if it was up here, you'd have a little bit more turn. And then same thing with this. Turn it to the right. It's moving here. You can see when I'm rocking how much the tire turns. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it's more than one would think. So if that pin was in there, you're not going to get that axle play, and you're going to get full turn. So we will install a pin on this one for the customer too, as it's part of our heavy duty upgrade kit. With the poor man's power steering we already installed. The heim joint ends and the tie rod and drag link and then the axle pin and then the new wheel bearings and that will basically tighten up your whole front end and your steering so now we're just going to have to soccer jam nuts back in and take her for a ride